you can hardly describe it as being a great success. No deal has at this stage been agreed. We kick that forwards to the next big EU summit on the 13th and 14th of December. Uh, what's been agreed from the British side? Well, the Prime Minister has conceded the principle that the transition period could go on for a further year, that is, until the end of 2021. And, of course, into the bargain, that means that we'll be handing over approximately another £20 billion. Pounds. Here was Mrs May during her press conference asked about this possible extension to the transition period. Well, first of all, let me address this issue that you've raised about the potential extension, as you recall, to the, the transition or the implementation <laughs> period. This is an idea that has been around uh, before. I've been asked about it in the, the pot potential for an extension in the House of Commons previously. I've always been very clear that we negotiated an implementation period with the EU, and we negotiated that that implementation period would end at the end of December 2020. What has now emerged is the idea that an option to extend the implementation period mm. could be a further solution to this issue of the backstop in, uh, in Northern Ireland. <laughs> what we are not, not doing, we are not standing here proposing an extension to the implementation period. Oh, really? What we are doing is working to ensure we have a solution to the backstop uh, issue in Northern Ireland that enables us to, uh, which is currently a blockage to completing the deal that enables us to get on with completing a deal that delivers on the vote of the, vote of the British people and is good for the future of the UK. Well, there was our leader, folks, jumbling and stumbling. Uh, later on, she said, oh, well, it may be just for a few months. Well, OK, yeah, 12 of them. Uh, Mr Jean-Claude Juncker, the President of the European Commission, was somewhat clearer. This prolongation of the transitional period probably will, will happen. That's a good idea. It's not the best idea the two of us we had, but I think that this is giving us some room to, the, to prepare the um, uh, future relation in the best way uh, possible. No, he wasn't hanging out the bunting, but you can tell he's pretty pleased. It's happening, folks. We've agreed the principle. We will be in this transition, if Mrs May stays as leader, until the end of 2021. Here was Jacob Rees-Mogg, chairman of the European Research Group, responding. It's a poorly thought through idea that uh, it takes us into the next multi-annual financial framework and that raises the issue of there being very substantial costs because the next framework will be determined without our veto and therefore it's unlikely that we would maintain our rebate so it could be a very expensive thing to do it's unknown as to whether this had approval from the cabinet when it met earlier in the week to make this proposition but it also doesn't solve the issue of the backstop because the backstop would remain uh, as far as one can tell, at the end of this additional transition. So it seems to me to be a rather poor attempt at kicking the can down the road. Well, that was Jacob Rees-Mogg. I think it's much worse than that. You see, I've always been opposed to the idea of a transition period at all. Why? Because the transition period was Article 50. That's what it was designed for in the treaties, to have a two-year period during which you sort everything out. I always feared it would slip. To accept the principle that it goes to the end of 2021, well, that takes us up to, within a couple of months, of the next general election. Folks, I promise you, if we stick with this course, the transition period will go on until the next general election, and we could get a government next time round that says, do you know what? We're just going to stay in the customs union forever and Brexit simply would not be delivered. Uh, what I also fear is there'll now be a three-year period during which we'll be rule takers without any say at all. And just you watch Mr Blair and Mr Major and everybody else. They're going to be straight in there saying, look, logically what we now need to do is suspend Article 50 as well and make sure that we maintain our members of the European Parliament and our European Commissioner during that three-year period. This is all, if you believe in Brexit, I think very bad news. And frankly, uh, what with, with what's been agreed, uh, with her reaction to it, with the derision and laughter uh, that I was met with as a British person saying, ha ha, you're not going to get Brexit, are you? I think what I witnessed here in Brussels was an act of national humiliation. That is how I feel about it. But let me ask you, 
Do you think it's acceptable for an extension to this transition period to be put into place? And if you think, Nigel, actually, we need to do this. We need longer. The Prime Minister is right. If it helps a smooth departure, it makes sense. Then call 0345 973 If, like me, you're disgusted by it, text to 84850. Or maybe you feel sorry for Mrs May because she's got such a tough job to do, in which case tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And, of course, Facebookers, you can watch us live and you can comment there too. Jeremy from Harrow is my first caller of the evening. Jeremy, are you happy that we're going to extend this transition by up to a year or uh, more? I'm inc incandescent, actually, Nigel. I think it's absolutely outrageous. We voted Article 50, as you said, was the transition period. Yep. We've now, in our two, down, two years down the line, have been kicking the can down. There is a conspiracy, and there is no other word for it, between the likes of Mr Blair and Mr Major and Mr Clegg and the Commission to keep, it, to keep our money. Let's face it, it's to keep our money, because otherwise the whole lot, lot sinks. Uh, and, to, and to punish us, to make it so difficult that no other country would contemplate uh, triggering Article 50. That's all there is. And as for this Irish backstop nonsense, oh. we've had an open border between North and Southern Ireland since the early 1920s. There, and as you've said before, there are different customs arrangements and prices and tax tariffs and taxes Absolutely. between the two sides. So there's been no. So this is an absolute nonsense. We are being fed a lie. And then we have the people saying we didn't know what we were voting for. I'll tell you what I voted for, and I'm saying it's what you voted for and others did. We voted to take our country back. We voted for our parliament to be the government. And this is a question I would like to throw open to any one of these Romaniacs, Mr. Clegg and all the other traitors, and they are traitors. Uh, strong so, words, Jeremy, why, strong words. It, it's strong. I, I, I could say stronger. Why, it, why do you want us ruled by an unelected, unaccountable, unremovable, hostile, corrupt... Uh, because it's the European elite. dream, Jeremy. You're not getting with the project. No, 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 no. Jeremy, no, thank you. I want, Jeremy, a, I want Je a reason. J Jeremy and Harrow is incandescent. I'm going to go to Scotland, to Elgin, to speak to Mark, who's a new caller to the show. Welcome, Mark. Hello, Nigel. Thanks for having me. Not a bit. So do you welcome a year's extra transition? No, absolutely not. I, I, I don't accept it at all. I, I, I think that what's going on here is the intention is to prevaricate, uh, to delay the process of Brexit in the hope uh, that... Sooner or later, the whole thing can uh, be arrested and overturned and that, frankly, we'll never leave the European Union. I think that's the ultimate intention. Yeah, there may be one other, Mark. So, so picture this. It was about 10 to 2. I'd been up at the council all morning doing a lot of interviews. I needed some breathing space, went for lunch, sat down, ordered a drink, and a chap on the next table came over. He said, uh, Nigel, I must introduce myself. I'm the former Norwegian ambassador to the European Union. He uh -huh. said, I can see what's happening here with all the different delays, with opting in to stay part of the customs union for years to come. He said, you're headed for a Norway-style exit. And that would mean, Mark, whilst we might get our fish back in Scotland, which would be good, it would mean being tied to nearly all European Union rules, continuing to pay a big sum of money, and having pretty much open borders. And that was his guess of where we're going. Yeah, but that, uh, I, I mean, for me, that's singularly unacceptable. I, I, I mean, essentially what has to happen at the moment, in my view, and I think the pressure's growing by the day on this, is that Theresa May has to be removed as the Prime Minister. I couldn't I think, agree well, I think what baffles me most about this is that currently there are there are 315 Conservative MPs in the House of Commons, uh -huh. and yet it simply needs just 48 of them to, tr I know, to trigger. I know, I know. What, 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 I, what I really don't get, given the amount of of, I think, fury that now exists in much of society about this moment is what are the other 267 well, Conservative afraid. MPs thinking? Well, don't forget, Mark, about 120 of them are on the payroll, OK? So for them to come out against the Prime Minister means resigning their job and losing money. Um, but most of them, I agree with you, they're all afraid to be seen to be the one wielding the knife. I just don't get it. Mark, thank you. On Twitter, Theresa May and her aides are performing a feet-dragging operation, and if
if people can't see through it, they are dumb, says James. Nigel, enough really is enough. May can't deliver what we want, and this latest setback is infuriating. Walk away now with WTO rules, says Steve in the Cotswolds. Can someone explain to me how extending the implementation period fixes the Northern Ireland border problem? She's an idiot, Nigel, says Peter in Lancashire. It doesn't solve anything. She accepted this principle of the backstop, and I'm going to talk a bit more about that later on in the programme. But I want to get more of your voices first. I'm going to Tamworth to speak to Gary. Good evening, Gary. Evening, Nigel. Nice to speak to you. Yeah, so what um, do you think? I've I mean, been to I mean, the book. Go on. I'm 62 years old, and I've been to the bookies today, and I asked him if he'll give me odds on whether I'll still be alive when we get Brexit. <laughs> dear, dear. Because You've... I think we're having a never exit. So it's do you think... It's absolutely disgraceful. Well, can I ask you, Gary... Do you think the Prime Minister is in this mess because she's incompetent, or do you think it's deliberate? I think it's deliberate. She's a Remainer. Michel Barnier has had more meetings with Remainers than he has had with Brexiters. That yes. That must tell everybody something. Including, including Tony Blair last week, Gary. Including Tony Blair last week, Gary. Gary, I'm going to move on. Um, so far... You seem to be ranging from upset, depressed, to incandescent. Surely somebody must think it's a good idea to extend this period. What does Paul Embarking make of it? Hello, Nigel. Um, evening, sir. Basically, what you just mentioned there, Nigel, this Bri that's basically what she's up to. She wants to do a Brino Brexit in name only till the 2022 election. And if she runs again as, as the Tory leader, they're going to lose to Corbyn. You've got to remember, Nigel, thank God you mentioned it tonight. You mentioned about, is it done on deliberate or incompetent? Mm, you have mm. to understand, this is not incompetence. This is done on purpose. She was the establishment pick from the day one. That led to yeah, Theresa May. This was the fallback plan to have Theresa May as Tory leader. And from day one, with Ollie Robbins or whatever, in the background, civil service to, to overturn the Brexit result. This is this is this is going to be proven from day one. She's, she's showing herself here, Nigel. Well, she wants to well, overturn well, the election. Uh, uh, she, she is certainly betraying Brexit in a dramatic way. When David Davis wrote last week that if she stuck to this course, it would have dire consequences for the Conservative Party at the next election, you think he was right? Yeah. Listen, Nigel, she has no care for her Tory colleagues. If she had to care for her Tory colleagues, she'd leave now. This is the order. Her Tory colleagues are nothing. Her party means nothing. The, the, it's her beloved EU. That's all she cares about. If her, if her, well, coll if her Tory colleagues lose 50 seats the next day, she does not well, care. I, 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 I don't know about that, Paul. I'll tell you what, she cares about her career, and she cares about staying as Prime Minister. That I do know. And up until now, folks, she has certainly had stickability. You can admire her for that. Whether she can survive this remains to be seen. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it's now 6.15. Another year of transition, possibly up to the next general election. Another £20 billion we'll hand over to the European Union. Who knows how much of that we may get back. And yesterday, an open letter was written to the Prime Minister by David Davis, Ian Duncan Smith, Boris Johnson, Owen Patterson, Priti Patel and Jacob Rees-Mogg. In it, they said, we were all elected on a manifesto to gain full independence by leaving the customs union and the single market. It is crucial we deliver on those promises. Talk of a Northern Irish backstop goes against our status as a sovereign nation state. We urge you not to engage in a share of resistance and a choreographed argument followed by surrender and collapse into some version of the backstop or checkers. Folks, she ignored you completely yesterday. And that's exactly what she'll do at the December summit. She will sign up to something probably even worse than we've seen so far. So can I ask you all a question? When will you stop? urging the Prime Minister to change direction. It's clear she won't. When will you actually have the guts to stand up and say, in the name of God, go, you are a disaster as Prime Minister and you are betraying Brexit? So far, they can't even muster 48 letters. It's a mystery to me. Now, Chris takes a different view on text and he says, you know Brexit isn't deliverable. Why do you persist in winding up the manipulated levers? Chris, there's no problem with Brexit. Brexit is not the problem the Prime Minister is is and it's perfectly deliverable it's all about political will let's go to steve in sturbiton steve good evening good evening nigel uh, up until today i had thought that theresa may could have played a little bit of a blinder because you know it, it was people from all parties that voted for brexit so she could yes. have said it's not this isn't about party lines this is about delivering for the people that voted and then once we leave to please the remainers we could have set up a few things just to make everybody happy and then she comes out with this. And it just makes me think now, 
well, they're just trying to let it run to a general election. Corbyn will probably put, they'll yeah. sneak in a Remain in the EU option somewhere into their manifesto, and that's what they'll really push for. Um, but I think there might be another way of dealing with it, um, oh. which I haven't heard anybody explore. Well, we are supposed to be a self-governing nation, like the people we are elect members of our own community into the House of Commons, and we govern our own, we make our own laws. But we have something called, sorry, I've got a ferret lick in my ear. And we have ferret. something called the wet ferret, yeah. Little, <laughs> little we we ferret had a pig pack. the other day on the show, but uh, Steve, <laughs> carry on, please. Right, anyway, yeah, so, um, uh, where was I? Uh, yeah, we elect people to, uh, we've got a Westminster bubble, a political class and uh, the political elite. So yeah. they're not us. So the question remains, do they represent us? Well, if they are aligned to an external corporate bureaucracy, then they place themselves in breach of, our, in breach of democracy. Because what they've done is they've placed a uh, self-governing sovereign people into a state of subservience within so a corporate... So what do we do about it, Steve? Steve, I agree with you that analysis. Them for breach of trust. Oh, they, I tell you what, if you think we're going to win through legal recourse, we're not, Steve. They've got they're... no choice because we are we are common law. We are the sovereign. They have well, no defence against well, it. They are there to serve us. Good luck with it. My experience is... The, the place you've got to kick them hard is in the ballot box. That's my experience of it. Steve, I thank you for your call. Pete in Wantage says, today is the day. Today is the red line day. Today is the day that it's 100% obvious that we are being sold down the river. Although I've thought that for some months. Stall, stall, stall. Eventually, we'll all get so sick of it, we'll say, let's just stay in. Pete, I do think today is a big, important day in all of this. I'm going to go to Jane, who's calling from Clapham. Good evening, Jane. Hello, um, Nigel. I haven't spoken to you before. Yes, today is the day. It is clear it's all about delay and betray. Um, that's it. We need to just settle all this on March the 29th. We don't need a transition period. We just say it is settled March the 29th. We're not going to give you any more money. We shall honour our commitments and we will oversee how our money is spent. And then we can get on with the job of repairing our country and in turn repairing our world, which is just vital. Jane, I'd love to see all of that being done, but the truth of it is that is not going to happen with this Prime Minister. So do you agree with me that it's about time that David Davis and Jacob Rees-Mogg and all the others stood up and said, for goodness sake, go, Mrs May, you're a disaster? Oh, I've got, well, better than that, she should realise that uh, she can't do the job and she should just resign. Well, I don't think she will, Jane, but Jane, let's see what happens. Thank you very much indeed for your call. On Twitter, I get, if it's a no deal, the Tories will be wiped out, says Doug. Uh, Doug, equally, I would say to you, uh, that if it's a sellout deal, the Tories equally will get, def in my view, definitely get wiped out. Outrageous betrayal of democracy. I am hopping mad. What a sellout. My wife and I will never vote Conservative again while she is PM, says Henry from Bodmin. Henry, you are not alone, but Steve takes a different view on Facebook and says... We need to stay in the EU. It's the only solution. Really, Steve? This island of ours uh, that has been one of the most amazing, phenomenal countries in the whole history of mankind, and you're telling us the only solution is to be governed by Mr Juncker and this b bunch of gangsters over here. I don't believe it. Phil is a new caller from Scarborough. Good evening, Phil. Good evening, Nigel. Um, I just wanted to really call in. I'm a Remainer, um, yes. but I wanted to ask you... We've got an extension now to get the the, the, the Brexit deal because that's what we we will ha, be leaving. Ha, ha, and I was, ha. No, no. I, I, what what it is? I'm like, why are you so worried when you've won won the uh, referendum? Why are you so worried that just extending so we can get the correct Brexit deal? Why is it making you so nervous? Because every night I listen to you, you seem to get more and more nervous. Yes, I do, because week by week the betrayal gets worse, Phil, and you can see exactly what's happening here. Uh, this extension to the end of 2021 will effectively now be until the next general election, and we could get somebody elected uh, that, frankly, overturns the whole thing, keeps us in perpetuity in the customs union. No wonder 
that Norwegian former ambassador today said to me, you're headed for a form of EEA membership. Yeah, but why, why don't you hold your nerve and think, no, Brexit, we want to get the right Brexit, not the Brexit at any cost, but the right Brexit, because that's what the people voted for. Surely you should be saying, okay, stick Phil, with it, let's get the right Phil, Brexit. Phil, I let's tell you what, right thing. no, I, I listen, I, I absolutely understand the point you're making. Let me say this to you. If I believe sincerely in her heart that Theresa May believed in Brexit, then I would say, fine, you know, do what's right. Basically, uh, the truth of it is, Phil, she is a Remainer, uh, and she's leading, up, leading us up the garden path and taking us to a place where we, we will not get a Brexit that is recognisable. Phil, I thank you for your point. Sandra says, does Theresa May really think that she will ever get voted in again? Well, maybe she'll just do a runner. Sandra, and leave, and leave her own party to collapse next time round. I don't know. Sally says, surely no deal now would be seriously better than this Chequers deal. Sally, no deal is better than a bad deal, and that applies in almost every walk of life, including this. Al is calling from Manchester, yet another new caller to this show. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Nigel. First time to speak to you, like, like you said there, yeah. Totally agree with you. Always have done. Vote uh, for yourself in Brexit, uh, for the UKIP party this time. Uh, after voting Tory for years, and I tell you what, best thing I've done, I think we should get right out. I think uh, we've got this Article 50 in place. It should be honoured. I think anyone who speaks up and backs it and says that we've got to have a transition period, a traitor, the names should be put down. Everybody should know who they are. And I think this Oily Bobbins who's advising her. I think mm. he should be investigated because he's behind a lot of it. Well, I, there's no point investigating the civil service, um, Al, because I think probably about 99% of them want to see Brexit overturned, so there's yeah, no need for, there's no need for an investigation. The they don't belong there. They shouldn't be there at all. I think she's, but, she's, she's but like I say, traitor, traitor mate. Well, it's, it's a strong it word. It suits but, her, that name. But, 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 Al, it's also worth pointing out, as you're from Manchester, which is a big Labour stronghold, that Labour are doing the same thing too, aren't they? Labour are going against their manifesto. Labour are going against all the things Jeremy Corbyn said since the referendum. And the, there are five million, five million people who voted Brexit who are Labour voters. So it's actually both parties doing it. Al, I'm going to move on. I'm, I'm going to move on. I've got so many of you want to call, uh, and so many of you new callers too. I'm off to Barnsley to speak to Wendy, a new caller. Good evening, Wendy. Good evening, Nigel. So, are you happy with this year's extension? I am not. I'm absolutely fuming. I think it's about time that the Brexiteers, uh, the MPs, woke up and realised she's not going to listen to reasoning. She has to go. OK, well, Wendy, give a, give a message, give a quick message to Boris Johnson and Jacob Rees-Mogg. What do they need to do? They need to get the letters in. And at least if they try to bring her down and they don't, they've gone down fighting. Because we've got nobody else that's listening to us. My MP is John Jarvis. I've emailed him several times. Mm. It's just a waste of time. Um, you know, and, and even Labour's gone back on the manifesto. Absolutely. Wendy, I've got to go. Folks, listen to Wendy and Barnsley. She's not alone. There are many millions who feel the way she does today. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it's now 6.30. And Theresa May accepts that we're going to have a further year of transition to the end of 2021. I'm asking, do you think that's acceptable? I think it's wholly unacceptable. I think today was the day when any pretensions any of you had that Theresa May wants to deliver a genuine Brexit, surely they must all be over now. Um, now, we talked the other day about Saudi Arabia, about the total disappearance of Jamal Khashoggi, and about perhaps the fact that occasionally we may crack down hard on Russia when they do bad things, uh, but we don't tend to with Saudi Arabia uh, because of money. But we do learn today that the Future Investment Initiative in Riyadh, which is this big investment conference and trade conference taking place later this month, known as the Davos of the Desert, and we have learned that International Trade Secretary Liam Fox is pulling out of that. I just thought worth following up on that debate we had the other day. And the Belfast Telegraph are reporting a new source at RTE, the Irish broadcaster, saying that Theresa May met the Irish Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, and she agreed with him that if there is a no-deal Brexit, the backstop would be permanent meaning that Northern Ireland would stay permanently in the customs union, regardless what the rest of the country did. Let's see how that report develops. Let's see if that's absolutely 100% true. If it is, I simply can't see how the 10 DUP 
MPs can go on supporting this government. Back to the question, do you find this further year acceptable? By March 2019, we would have had two years and nine months of transition. Let's have a vote on the deal, but only those that voted leave should get a vote. Jason in Poplar, it doesn't work like that. Rhys Mogg and David Davis are cowards. They talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. If they think Brexit is so wonderful, why don't they take over? Ford... It seems they want to take over, uh, Boris certainly wants to take over, and yet all they do is urge the Prime Minister to change direction. Perhaps it's time to change the Prime Minister. Rick is a new caller from Kingston-upon-Thames. Good evening, Rick. Hi, no, hi Nigel. Um, Nigel, um, I, I'm just calling to say I, I think um, your callers, you, David Davis, are being a, a little bit harsh with um, Theresa May. OK. Um, and... Leavers haven't been able to answer this simple question, and they keep, it's just a yes or no question. Do you want freedom of movement in the, in the island of Ireland? Yes, we, yes, we've had it for 100 years, okay. and, we're and we're happy to continue. Right, so do you want freedom of movement with the EU? No. But Ireland, so of course, is, 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 but Ireland, Ireland of course, is, part is not of part EU. of the Schengen. But it's not part of the Schengen zone. If it was part of the Schengen zone, we would have a major problem. And I accept that, but they're not mercifully part of Schengen. I don't see that causing us any trouble at all. But well, why, why is that not, uh, not trouble? Because goods and people are going to be moving freely across the island of Ireland, but goods and yep. people cannot move freely across the EU. And if, Ireland is part of the EU. So I just don't understand how this conundrum can be solved. And well, no one well, has we, given well, me... Well, a we've, we've just answered your question. I mean, when it comes to the Irish border, Rick, this has been put up as an insoluble problem. And the truth of the matter is, you know, we operate the Irish border now. There are huge differences between Northern Ireland and the Republic now in terms of tax and currency, excise duties and many things. Uh, and this is just one more dimension. Uh, honestly, you know, if you say a problem's insoluble, well, that's one approach. The other is to say, let's solve it. Yeah, OK, so I'm not saying it's insoluble, but I'm saying you need time, right? You cannot just say, oh, I'm going to get it done by March the 29th and two, hours, two years later. It's not that easy. Well, and if people think that it's that easy, you know, why don't they come up with it, some... Well, it depends what we're some, aiming at, Rick. I mean, if we were aiming at a simple free trade deal, then it is easy because we have exactly the same level of regulations right now as the rest of the European Union. The, you know, it could be done very quickly. Rick, I take your point about the border, but Ireland is very much an exception with this. Richard is calling from Sig Cup. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Nigel. Um, it, it's just become completely obvious now that there's a government within a government. Um, uh, some of it stretches over to the, the Channel and some of it stretches back over to the Irish Sea. But with us being bypassed in the middle between the political elites on either side, um, with, with Ireland, with Leo Varadkar, who's, who's obviously just an EU shill, um, and the globalists uh, uh, at the EU. And I'm sick. I'm sick of hearing Jacob Rees-Mogg parrot the same old rubbish, the same old nonsense, the jolly good egg, the party man, party yeah. before country, um, he, he, he helped instigate this. He, he, he got the troops marching. I, I, saw him on the, um, I saw him on your trip to Torquay the other day, raising, yes. rallying the flags and getting everybody yes. to sing along. And what is he doing? Nothing. He's just, and if he thinks he's going to patch up the Tory party after this mess, if him and David Davis and Boris Johnson think that they're going to clear up this rubbish and then sell themselves back to the electorate when all, when all this has been absolutely rubbished and betrayed this 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 brexit vote that the first real democratic choice this country has been able okay. to make for, for god knows how long if they think they're going to patch this up honestly okay they richard, are, they are. i i think you're sending a very clear message jacob Rees-Mogg, richard in sig cup says put party before country that's right richard isn't it right yeah and i think the public should start listening or to should he put Gerard Batten now right okay we'll see you never know they may well do that stephen in lanarkshire is a new caller to the show hi stephen Hi, Nigel. Nice to talk to you. How are you? Uh, well, I'm pretty blooming angry, and I... Stephen, I meant what I said at the top of the hour. I thought, as, you know, as I left that summit last night, I couldn't wait to leave the room. It was almost... Emba it was embarrassing to be British. We were witnessing a national humiliation. I think you've been melodramatic. All right. So, t t um, well, okay, well, Stephen, please tell me that what she's achieved... That, that what, that what the she's achieved... ...is irrelevant. Is As it? it stands, we're not getting there. Because we need to agree something on the backstop. And we don't have that solution yet. 
Well, the backstop was designed for there to be no solution. That's the point. That was where Barnier was very clever. He he it, tricked the he tricked the prime minister Stephen into signing up for it. Uh, he won't accept any answer that's given, and it was all done to make sure the UK stayed within the European Union's regulatory framework, because the one thing Barnier did not want was for us to become competitive. Uh, you might say that, but you have inadvertently said that the Irish problem's insoluble. Well, I haven't said it's insoluble. I, I believe it's... Per you, you I, I be it as insoluble there. No, no, I, I am saying that Monsieur You're Barnier... It was designed to be insoluble. You're it was designed to be, yes. Insoluble. It was designed to be insoluble, and it certainly isn't. Of that, I'm... At, well, of course it isn't. Stephen, thank you. Another new caller is Paul from Waltham Cross. Paul, what do you make of this one-year extension? Uh, well, in a lot of respects, it is completely wrong. It's against the will of the people. Right. But where you're actually defending certain elements, that's also wrong. What am I defending, what, Paul? What is... You are defending every time somebody's mentioned the word treason. It isn't treason. It's high treason. <laughs> OK, okay. I'm, being too, I'm being too soft, Paul, being, am I? Yes, you are. Because All at right. the end of the day, you praise <clears throat> uh, your friends in Europe when you say that they're friendly and all the rest of it. They are not friendly to this country. Uh, hang on, Paul. Our industry uh, has Paul, been Paul, decimated. Paul, can, we, can, can I just stop you a second, right? What I've always said is that I respect the European peoples and I respect European nations. What I do not respect are the unelected bureaucrats in the European Commission that run Europe. They are a bunch of gangsters, all right? So I'm drawing, Paul, a distinction between Europe and the European Union. Yeah, but you also defend them. But it doesn't matter. I don't. Right? I don't. I've never, def I've never defended them, Paul. I've never voted for a... Si you know, I mean, honestly... Okay, I'll all right, I'll wear that, right? But our industries have been decimated. All our factories, all our industries have been shipped abroad via decree by Brussels. Our industries uh, relying on um, next day delivery has been all set up so we cannot defend ourselves. All our mun uh, munitions, our uh, arms industries are gone. All Paul, sold out Paul, Paul, do you believe, Paul, do you believe, Paul, that a true Brexit can help us solve many of those problems? By re-industrialising the country, by shutting ourselves away from Europe and their bureaucratic dictatorship. Yes. OK. Paul, thank you. I'm going to move on. We got there in the end. Europe and the European Union, folks, are two very different things. This mob here think they are Europe. I don't believe they are at all. What does Ben in Brighton make? of today's decision. Nigel, brilliant, Hello, thank man. you. Um, I was just listening to you just before the half six news. Yes. And you said that what you were concerned about is that Mrs May is kicking this down the can, down the path for so yeah. long that uh -huh. we might end up with another election. Yes. And then, God forbid, we could have a government elected that wanted to keep us in the EU. By trickery, yes. And I wondered what, I wondered what you call that process. Um, well, you know, it, they, they are, I, I think there is a democracy, deliberate attempt. Perhaps? Uh, well, uh, the point, uh, no, 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 democracy would be, but democracy would be delivering, elected, democracy would be delivering no. the Brexit result. There is a willful attempt here, Ben, to stop us leaving the European Union. That's the point I'm making. Okay, but if you are fearful that the majority of people would vote for a government that kept us in it, that is democracy. Is <coughs> but it no, it's like not, Ben, because what would... And as was said by a caller on this show earlier, the Labour Party could write it in somewhere in the small print and actually we'd vote him a general election, not on this great constitutional question, but on health or defence or whatever other issues it is. Ben, I do take the point about democracy. I just fear this issue kind of getting lost in a general election um, and the greatest exercise ever in democracy in our nation not being delivered. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at 
6.45. A year's extension to the transition period, and Mrs May says she's buying time to make sure we get the right deal. I don't see it like that. I see kicking this can down the road towards the next general election, uh, the next argument following closely on, which is, oh, well, of course, we'll need some MEPs again, won't we? Because we'll have three years where we wouldn't want to be a rule taker without having a say. Probably another European commissioner. The establishment want to keep us in. Sadly, Mrs May is part of that. That's what I believe. Gillian in Darlington, uh, Gillian in Darlington sorry, says what they put in their manifestos means nothing. Look at what happened at the last election. Gillian, I genuinely worry that what is happening right now to the faith and trust that people in our country have in the entire democratic process. This is not just the Conservative Party turning their backs and betraying Brexit. Labour are doing it as well. Martin is a new caller from Bromley. Hi, Martin. Hi, Nigel. So how do you feel about this further year? As, I don't think any of us would think that Theresa May is doing it as we would hope, but who right. do we put there that would make any on you, would make a difference? Boris, Gove, Davis, you know them. Who, well, do you, you who would you put there? All right, Martin, can, can I just say this to you? Brexit was an instruction from the people to turn around the ship of state by 180 degrees and to start sailing in a different direction. And to perform a big task like that, you've got to believe in it. This woman doesn't believe in it, Martin. So I would answer that by saying anybody who's got a bit of courage, got a bit of leadership, and knows where they want to take the country, anybody would do it better, in my view. Martin, you'd but probably do it better. Their career would probably be, be, be over, though. Well, yeah, but, is, but, but I mean, why are they all so... you should put your career on the line if you believe in it. I think on something as important as this, the answer to that is a big yes. I think yes. the well, the well-being of your career and your party don't matter a damn compared to this major historic change. Who do you think Martin might do a better job? Honestly, I I think they're all going to wait because none of them want to be there now. And then, de depending on how it goes, they'll step forward once it goes, whichever way it's going to go. Because right. so that's think, what you yeah. do. You, avoid, you don't come in now. Avoid the hot seat at a very difficult time. Yeah, 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 well, definitely. Yeah, jolly good job back in 1940. One or two folk thought differently, isn't it, really? Otherwise, goodness knows where we'd be. <laughs> Can I ask a question on the trade deal? This is one thing that I'm, ne I'm never on. quite sure on the trade deal. Go on. Can we, if, if checkers was to go through, yeah. can we do our own trade deals with checkers? Because it seems to never um, get answered. Right. Checkers has got worse since checkers. It's now checkers minus because what we were about to sign up to this week was to stay in the customs union during at least that transition period. And that would mean a big no, Martin. No, no, no. The Labour Party now accept that principle. I heard, I heard Keir Starmer say, oh, oh, it's far better to do these trade deals with Europe, meaning they do it for us. If you're in the customs union, Martin, you can't make your own trade deals. Not acceptable. Thank you. You very much indeed for your call. Howard on Facebook says, Italy will leave before us at this rate. Well, Howard, yesterday uh, the European Commission rejected the Italian budget. Um, the Italian budget deficit was put in for the year at 2.4%, and the Commission have said no. An elected government being told by an unelected bureaucracy that they will have to change their budget. That's how it works here. You may like the European Union, but please don't tell me it's democratic. Becky is calling from Midlothian. Hi, Becky, how are you? Oh, hi, Nigel. All the better for speaking to you. Um, yeah, I'm one of the few UKIP voters in Scotland. So, right. Um, I absolutely agree with everything that you've said today. I feel extremely depressed um, when I see Theresa May coming back yet again with absolutely zilch, nothing. Um, and what really scares me is all these people wanting a second... Well, they say a people's vote. A well, well, we had the people's vote, in my view, yeah. Yeah, well, they'll be rallying on Saturday, Becky. There'll be a people's vote, as they call it, march in London uh, this Saturday. Becky, do you think there's a chance we can save Brexit if we change the skipper? Oh, gosh, yeah, she has got to go. She right, lovely. Has... Becky, I'm going to leave it at that. She has got to go, says Becky in Midlothian. What does Vicky and Brighton make of today's developments? Good evening. I'm absolutely, absolutely fuming. I've voted Conservative since I was 18. I'm completely and utterly let down. It's absolutely outrageous. And in fact, I did a quick search on the internet to email the Prime Minister. And it says here, please use the form below to email the Prime Minister's office. All emails are read and we will do our best to ensure you receive a response. And what I suggest, national radio stations, 
that's exactly what people do and let her office be absolutely thousands and thousands of emails and let her really know what people right do. well i i do you know what vicky i think whatever uh, method people use i think it's really important at this time that people let their mps and the leaders of parties know how they feel because the 17.4 million of us voted for a fundamental change we voted to become an independent country and vicky they're trying to deny us it aren't they Completely, completely. It's disgusting, Nigel. I can't tell you how angry I'm about it. No, I think you know, I'm. Because we're the little people, and we don't matter. I think I'm picking that up down the line, Vicky. Thank you for that. I'm going to go to a new caller from Plymouth called Carol. Good evening, Carol. Hello, Nigel. Um, the reason I'm ringing is I am on your side. I'm on. I'm a Brexiteer, but uh -huh. I think whenever it comes up about why people like Boris Johnson haven't put you know, haven't really gone for it with the, um, the trying the, to be a new leadership. leader. Yeah. The, reason, yeah. the reason they haven't is it's not just a question of getting all the letters in. Once the letters go in, if Theresa May um, resists, which she has already mm -hmm. said she would on many occasions, sure. then there would be a, a vote um, between, between, I think, all the Conservative MPs, and there's no way the Brexiteers are going to get half of them. And, and the worst thing is that if they don't um, get half of them, they can't, for the next year, challenge her again. Carol, you're absolutely right to say that. Uh, um, and at the moment, it looks like Theresa May would still command a majority. Mind you, Mrs Thatcher, back in 1990, commanded a majority, but still felt that the tide was ebbing and, it, and, and really the time had come to go. Carol, I would put this to you. Isn't it better... You know, if, you, if you believe the words of that letter, signed yesterday by uh, David Davis and, and, and Jacob Rees-Mogg and, and Boris Johnson, uh, if you believe the strong words they've used about this being a, you know, a, a terrible thing for our nation, wouldn't it be better to take the risk and lose than never to try to get Brexit back on track? Gone. We've lost her. We've lost her. Oh, well, I was very much hoping to get Carol's answer to that, and I'm afraid I haven't got it. Theresa May is there because none of the Tory MPs had the guts to sort the Brexit problem out. I never liked Mrs May, but I do think she's being treated badly. Well, she certainly had a tough card to play. I absolutely grant you that, uh, but she hasn't done it very, very well. I've got time for one quick caller, Victoria, who's calling from South Hampstead. Oh, Hi, Victoria. Hi. Um, I'm just going because you say, OK, let's drag it on, kick the can down the road. It comes to the next election. And so how are they able to overrule Brexit? I don't understand how they're able to say, OK, let's do well, it. Well, because, because, Victoria, we're not actually leaving. We're due on this current trajectory to stay part of the customs union. I also, I also suspect they'll try and suspend Article 50 as well. We have a government, we have a leader doing their best not to give us Brexit. And I'm not being paranoid about it. Every single summit I come to, the situation gets worse. I'm sorry, Victoria, I'm out of time. I'm going to be back with you on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Tonight at 10, it's Tom Swalbrick, but up next, it's Ian Dale. Nigel, thank you very much. Come